High reps or low reps, which is better? Many people believe that aiming for a high rep count is better for cutting and getting very defined muscles with visible striations. Meanwhile, low reps are better at building more muscle mass and bulking up. However, neither of these statements is actually true, and there are many outdated misconceptions that people still have when it comes to choosing the best rep range for their goals. So in this video, we'll go over the benefits and drawbacks of each so that you can choose the best rep range for yourself. Let's first define exactly what I mean when I say high or low reps. High reps when it comes to weight training typically involve sets that are greater than 12 reps per set. 12 to 20 reps is the standard range as doing more than 20 reps will often lead to a breakdown in form due to the amount of fatigue that sets in. Meanwhile, low reps are commonly associated with any rep range from one to six reps per set but usually you'll stick within a range of three to six reps to minimize the chance of injury. Obviously, low reps are usually performed in combination with a much heavier weight load. Meanwhile, high reps require a lighter weight load. The idea that high repetitions inherently lead to more defined muscles is a very outdated and common misconception. Having more cut visible muscles is usually referred to as muscle definition or muscle tone, and both are primarily influenced by two factors, muscle size and body fat percentage. While high repetition training can contribute to muscle size, it doesn't have a direct correlation with building more defined muscles. You're not gonna burn significantly more fat from doing high reps either. And there's no way to target fat burn to specifically burn the fat away from the muscles you're working. It might feel like that's what's happening from the enhanced muscle burning sensation and the bigger pump that you'll experience during high rep workouts. But even though high reps can increase blood flow to the muscles you're working, and they can create a temporary feeling of tightness and fullness, this does not translate to long-term muscle definition. So when it comes to muscle definition, aside from genetics, the two biggest factors that are actually in your control are building your muscle size through resistance training while also reducing overall body fat percentage, which mostly boils down to maintaining a proper diet plan. Without addressing the body fat component, even well-developed muscles will stay hidden underneath a layer of body fat. So regardless of your rep range, you can still get very defined muscles just by building them up and staying lean. That's right, both high rep training and low rep training can be very effective for muscle growth in their own ways. For example, let's start with high rep training. Metabolic stress is a big component of muscle growth and it's generally higher when performing high reps rather than low reps. This metabolic stress triggers the release of growth hormone and IGF-1 which both play a key role in boosting muscle protein synthesis and helping with the muscle repair and growth process. Typically during high rep sets, the muscles that you're working will also get a greater amount of tut or time under tension. Not only will you feel more fatigued the longer a muscle is activated during a set, but more time under tension also stimulates the recruitment of both slow twitch and fast twitch muscle fibers. So even though fast twitch fibers are in fact more associated with heavier weight loads, while slow twitch fibers are more associated with higher reps, better resistance to fatigue, and improvements in endurance-based activities, the constant stress placed on your muscles during high rep training will actually engage both fiber types effectively. The major downfall of high rep training in terms of muscle growth is when you go overboard with reps. If you try to do any exercise for 50 or 100 reps, like let's say weighted squats for example, there's a high chance that your form will start to break down or you'll need to take a break due to excessive fatigue and exhaustion rather than your muscles actually failing. This is why I suggest if you're trying to build muscle with high rep training, still use heavy enough weights that limit you to under 20 reps before you fail or at least come close to failure. Now, low rep training offers its own unique set of advantages for muscle growth. For example, since it's associated with heavier weight loads, it requires the recruitment of a higher percentage of muscle fibers, specifically the fast twitch fibers, which have a greater potential for overall growth. Low rep training also places a very high demand on your central nervous system, leading to beneficial neural adaptations like increased muscle motor unit recruitment and improved coordination between your nervous system and your muscles. This is how low rep training can lead to much greater strength gains than high rep training. Increased strength can then allow you to lift heavier weights, which contributes to progressive overload. Consistently increasing the overall stress placed on your muscles over time is one of the main factors that leads to greater overall muscle growth, and low rep training helps you do just that. The downfall with low rep training is twofold. 
First of all, low rep training requires heavy weight loads to be effective, and those heavy weight loads place more strain on your joints and connective tissues. If you have improper form with heavier weight loads, it can easily lead to injuries like muscle strains, joint inflammation, or full out tears. The other issue is that low rep training doesn't stimulate slow twitch muscle fibers very effectively, so muscle fatigue can actually lead to a strength plateau. This is why purely for muscle building purposes, I recommend combining both high and low reps. For example, a very simple way to structure this is to perform three to six reps for three weeks and then switch to 12 to 20 reps for three weeks. Each of these rep ranges should be done with a heavy enough weight load that takes you to failure within that rep range. By switching back and forth like this, you get the best of both worlds. This is because it's important to realize that muscle strength and muscle endurance can each independently cause a plateau. So by working on both, you can actually get stronger, target slow and fast twitch muscle fibers more effectively and build muscle faster. So when your muscles are put through the demands of the high rep periods, your body will actually respond by increasing the number and the efficiency of mitochondria within your cells and becoming more resistant to fatigue. Mitochondria are referred to as the powerhouse of the cell because they play a crucial role in energy production. This improved ability to use oxygen for sustained energy will carry over to your lower rep periods. Then those lower rep periods will place a much higher mechanical load on the muscles, which will increase the size and strength of the contractile proteins within the muscle fibers like actin and myosin. This increase in force generation will then carry over to your high rep periods. Ultimately, you're creating a cyclical upward spiral. This is why you're likely to notice that each time that you switch rep ranges, you'll be able to perform a heavier weight load than the last time you were at that same rep range. The improvements from one rep range transfer over to the other, helping you break through plateaus, and that's the whole point. Now, of course, if your goal is purely performance rather than muscle growth, you may want to choose one rep range over the other and stick to it. That's because activities such as long distance running, cycling, rowing, and long distance swimming are all much more dependent on muscular endurance and those slow twitch muscle fibers. So if your goal was to perform your best at a marathon, it would make sense to focus less on squatting the heaviest weight load you could force out for three reps and instead focus more on higher reps to develop your endurance capacity. Working specifically on these higher rep ranges will make your body adapt so that it can more efficiently utilize oxygen and clear out metabolic byproducts. It'll also increase your ratio of slow twitch fibers, which, like I said, are highly efficient at utilizing oxygen to generate energy. On the other hand, if your goal is to get better at sprinting, powerlifting, or explosive sports with short bursts of activity like football, then you may be better off focusing on lower rep ranges. These lower rep ranges will improve power output, explosiveness, and central nervous system efficiency. This can help you tackle harder, sprint faster, or lift significantly heavier weight loads. There are also other sports that require both fast twitch and slow twitch fibers, such as soccer, boxing, and wrestling. These activities have short, intense bursts of explosive movement coupled with prolonged periods of sustained muscle activation that requires endurance. For example, a boxer needs to bounce around the ring sometimes for 12 full rounds while also throwing bursts of explosive punches in between. So it's beneficial for these kind of activities to perform both high reps and low reps during your workout routine. And remember, the three weeks of low reps followed by three weeks of high reps is just one way to set up your routine to get the benefits of both. You can also do both within one workout. For example, let's pretend you're trying to increase your push strength as well as your endurance. You always want to perform your heaviest compound lifts first so that fatigue isn't as much of a limiting factor in the amount of weight you can lift. So you can start your workout with three really heavy sets of bench press for three to six reps. Then for your next three sets, you could perform six to eight reps of dumbbell presses with a drop set of 20 reps at the end of each set. So you would use a heavy weight for six to eight reps, then immediately drop to a lighter weight load for 20 reps. Alternatively, instead of the 20 reps of dumbbell presses, you can perform push-ups to failure at the end of each heavy dumbbell press set. This would allow you to train muscle strength and muscle endurance all within one session. And there are actually many other ways that you can set this up. In a nutshell, when comparing one rep range against the other, there is no one best rep range. It highly depends on your goals. But to put it simply, there are individual benefits to each rep range. Research and organizations like the National Academy of Sports Medicine have shown that a rep range of one to six per set is best for increasing muscle strength, 
Then seven to 12 reps per set is most often recommended for increasing muscle growth. And 12 or more reps per set are best for increasing muscle endurance. However, by performing all of these rep ranges, you can get benefits from each of them, and that can be invaluable, especially when it comes to breaking through plateaus and sticking points. So that about wraps it up. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, make sure you subscribe to my channel. And if you want a done for you program that lets you stop wasting time and helps you skip all that trial and error, you can register now for my free six week shred. You'll go through a streamlined process that includes full workout programs with a guided video exercise library, a personalized meal plan, a 42 recipe cookbook, and a coach to guide you through the entire program. To find out more, head on over to my website where, like I said, you can get all this for free as long as you put your best foot forward and simply stick to the plan we create for you for the six weeks. By sticking to this plan, you'll get incredible results and we'll get an incredible before and after picture. To find out more about our free six week shred, click the link below in the description or you can head straight on over to the website at gravitytransformation.com. I'll see you guys soon.